Oh. Renault has just announced that it's going to be converting its very well thought of electric car, the Renault Zoe, into a small city electric van called the Renault Zoe van. Now, it's not available in the UK right now, but what are available are these two vehicles from Renault. On this side, the Renault Kangoo ZE, wearing the same clothes it always has. And on this side, the Renault Master ZE, wearing all of its new clothes and looking fantastic. Now, these are two very compelling offers in the LCB electric sector right now. So, let's crack them open and give them their very own Vanarama road test. Before we get started, I sincerely hope you enjoy this video, and if you do, don't forget to like it, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell to get notified whenever we post new content just like this. And if you are in the market for a brand new van, car, or pickup truck, whether that's electric or diesel engines, or even petrol engines, don't forget to head to vanarama.com and check out the deals. Now, with all that said and done, let's start at the front where we usually do. Okay, so let's start with the Renault Kangoo. Well, it looks exactly the same as it ever has with the big black plastic front. There's a little bit of chrome detailing, but if you head around and look at the side, you'll see it's quite a generous vehicle. It's also got two side sliding doors, and at the back end, you've got two doors as well to access the loading bay. Very nice, very functional. And on this side, you've got the Renault Master with its all new look. And just look at that front end, all of that lovely chrome. It looks the business. This vehicle is designed to carry big, heavy, bulky loads all over the place. And this one over here is for those lighter loads and pricing gigs, I guess. That would probably be a really good way to use this vehicle. So there you go, that's what they look like. You've got the big van on one side and the small van on the other. Let's crack them open, let's get in the cabins and see what we're dealing with on the inside. Now, the upgrade to electric has not really changed much in the front of the Kangoo. In fact, the only thing that tells you this is the electric vehicle, especially on the inside, apart from the drive selection switch, is just down in the bottom right-hand corner of the dashboard instruments of the initial ZE, which denotes that this is the electric version. Apart from that, it's the same old comfortable, hard black plastic, durable fabric interior that you know and love from the Renault Kangoo. And it has that sort of trademark sweeping dashboard that goes all the way to this great big windscreen that feels like it's about two miles away from you. It's a really nice interior. As I said, the seats are very comfortable. The steering wheel is very nice and easy to use. It actually has uh, begun to get a little bit sticky in the hot weather, but that's just because I've been touching it, so don't you worry about it. I'm a bit of a tree frog myself, so I think you'll find that the steering wheel will be no problem whatsoever. Now, one thing that did jump out at me is the comedy little stalks either side of the steering wheel. They're still here. The very little fiddly little switches, but you know what? They are really tough and durable, and they're not going to break anytime soon. The instruments on the dashboard are also very clear. You've got some nice storage on the top of the dash above the climate controls. Below that, you have a CD player, <laughs> but you do have an aux in cable socket right here, and you do have a USB charging point. This is the drive selector switch. Very nice and comfortable to use. Just remember that in the electric version, drive is down all the other ones are above drive. So you pull it all the way back to put it into drive. You've got a very tough handbrake down here, very nice and easy to use. And then apart from that, you've got some cup holders here. You've got your very nice and generous glove box down here. You've got excellent door storage and you've even got somewhere to hang your coats. So there we go. It's basically the same interior that the Kangoo's had for ages. It's all here, functional and very comfortable. Let's go and see how the Renault Master ZE stacks up. So hop up into the Renault Master ZE's cabin, and again, a very familiar cabin. The upgrade to electric being denoted once again by the initial ZE in the bottom right-hand corner of the dashboard instrumentation. It's a really nice, comfortable interior, as you can see, with a nice bench seat for your two passengers, and a really nice, comfortable driver's seat with, very, very nice, armrest. I'm gonna stash it so I can show you some other bits. The steering wheel is, again, comfortable and functional. There's no controls on it, and just behind it are those lovely little comedy short stalks. But again, very tough, very hard wearing, and very easy to use, actually, despite their uh, shortness. 
I was going to say lack of length, but shortness I think is exactly the right term to use. The dashboard instrumentation itself is very good and very clear. And above it, you've got some storage bins all across the top of the dashboard with cup holders on either side, which is great. Storage in here is actually almost everywhere. You've got it above your head, you've got it on top of the dash, you've got a little table down here. You've even got very cool storage in the doors. You've got little pockets up the top and you've got bigger bins down at the bottom. Moving across the dashboard, you've got one of my favorite features. Do you ever find yourself sitting on site wondering what to do or having a sandwich and trying to watch stuff on your phone with one hand and eat your sandwich with the other? Don't worry about it. Boom. They've got a device holder mounted in the center of the dashboard with these nice adjustable arms and rubberized back to hold it in place without scratching it. It's absolutely fantastic. And if I can recommend a film, I would say Groundhog Day because Bill Murray is a revelation in it. Just below that, you've got an upgraded media center. There's no CD player, but you do have MP3 and Bluetooth connectivity. You've also got the same aux in socket here and a USB socket right here to charge your devices. Underneath that, you've got some blank buttons and your eco mode button, your hazard light button and your locking button. And then you've got your climate controls for your full AC, which is cool to see. Haha, <laughs> cool, very good pun. Well done, Tom, chalk up that one. Okay, below that, you've got a nice little storage area with a 12 volt socket and a cup holder. Your drive selector switch is just to the right of that, and that's in a very convenient place mounted up on the center console, right in front of your handbrake here. Tracking along to this side, you've got your glove box, and again, you've got some little storage entry just down in the left-hand side. You've also got some hooks up here for your hoodie or your jacket or your high-vis jackets. It's a great, great cabin. There's no compromises made here in the upgrade to electric. I absolutely love it. They've done a really good job. I also just quite like the little chrome trim around all of the vents. They've really set it off very nicely. So there we go, two great cabins. Let's get into the back end of the Kangoo and see if any compromises have had to be made there. The loading bay of the Renault Kangoo is exactly how you will remember it except this one has two side sliding doors to allow you access to a very generous loading bay. Now, thanks to a bit of studio magic, all the facts and figures, the stats and dimensions will be appearing on your screen along with payload, which is of course all important. First impression, is of a nicely ply-lined loading bay with plenty of lashing points, which makes it a very functional and very practical loading bay to make sure that you can secure any of the loads that you might be carrying in the back of the Kangoo down so it doesn't rattle around. So there you go, as you can see, nothing's been compromised on in the transition to electric in the Kangoo's loading bay. Let's go and take a look at the back end of the Master and see if the same can be said about the big van. The Renault Masters back end has also not been compromised on. It's absolutely cavernous. Now I'm a big fan of nice ply lining and this ply lining is some of the nicest I've seen in a long time. It's even on the back doors as well, which means you've got plenty of opportunities if you want to, to stick your own racking and loading solutions in there as well. The ply lining is great and comes as standard if you lease from us and there are also tons of lashing points and bungee points as well. It is the perfect practical big van loading bay. I can't really say too much else, apart from the fact that I do have to draw your attention to the fact that there is LED lighting right here by the side door, and there's LED lighting above the back door as well. They really have thought of everything. Now, let's move on to the next section, but before we get to the road test, I wanna play a little game of spot the charging point. Hello and welcome to Spot the Charging Point on the Renault Master and Renault Kangoo ZE. I'm your host, Tom Roberts. Now, when I first approached the Renault Master ZE, I thought to myself, well, that's got to be where it is. So I popped open the passenger door and I flipped this little hatch open only to find a blank filler cap. Hmm, so it's not there. Where can it be? So then I came round to the driver's side and I opened the door here because I'd noticed that there was a little flap here and there it is. Perfect. On the driver's side, hidden under this little hatch. There we go, so we found it on the master. 
just go see where it is on the Kangoo ZE. So when it came to the Kangoo ZE, I was flummoxed once again because I saw this right here, I flipped it open, and no, it's another blank filler cap and no amount of punching or gouging removed it and there was no charging point underneath it. So where is it on this one? So then I moved around to the front of the vehicle and I thought to myself, do you know what? Maybe it's in the same place as on the Zoe. And lo and behold, behind the Renault badge, there it is. Just hidden again under a nice little hatch. So there we go. Thanks for playing. Spot the charging point on the Renault Kangoo ZE and Renault Master ZE. I've been your host, Tom Roberts, and let's get on with the rest of this review. Now, road test time. Which one should we go for first? Let's go with the Kangoo. First impressions count for a lot. And as I said at the beginning of the review, the Renault Kangoo hasn't really had anything added to it on the outside that makes it look any different from its diesel equivalent. And so the cabin and the drive generally feels exactly the same. It's nice and, and sort of comfortable in here. Hard, durable fabrics are cushioning my bottom very, very nicely. And you know what? It's very spacious in here, so I can't really complain too much. The only thing that I will complain about and this is the only complaint you're really going to hear in this whole driving section, is that today is a scorcher. It is 25, 26 degrees out there at the moment. And do you know what this van doesn't have, which the Renault Master does? This one doesn't have air conditioning. And I'll tell you what, woof, I need it today. So if you can hear some fan noise in the back, that's where it's coming from. It's coming from the fans. Not air conditioning, just fans. So here we go, it's cornering very nicely. No skipping or anything like that, very nice and easy. I mean, the only reason that you would ever have to suspect that this was an electric vehicle while you're actually driving it is simply because there's no noise. It just feels like the diesel equivalent, hugging onto the road as it always has. The Renault Kangoo is certainly intact in its ZE format. Probably just one thing I'd say about the, the braking actually, it's very keen doesn't take a lot for them to engage. I push my foot down maybe three quarters of an inch and it feels like a full lock. Oh! And you know what, there's not as much acceleration that you'd expect, but hey, it's a short hop van with a 124 mile range. I wasn't expecting it to take off like the Millennium Falcon or anything like that. I've got to say, very nice and smooth drive. Acceleration is smooth. Road driving is smooth. I mean, smooth is basically a word that you could suffix to the end of this. The Renault Kangoo ZE Smooth Edition. So let's have a look. I've started off this test ride with 91 miles of predicted range. Let's see what happens when we put it through a few corners and a few straights and a few speedy bits. So we're gonna do the usual Vanarama test track. As I said, nothing really much has changed. The Kangoo itself has been in an electric format for quite a while now. It's got a really nice sweeping dashboard. The windscreen itself actually feels like it's quite a way away from you. And the end of the vehicle is actually quite a way. You actually feel like you're sitting in the middle of this vehicle with so much in front of you and so much behind. And that's not a bad thing. It does make you feel quite safe. Roundabouts are no hassle either. I would like to see a little bit more acceleration available to you when you're going around a corner because actually you don't feel, like I said, this is quite a smooth vehicle to accelerate away in. And it just doesn't feel like it's got too much guts beneath the surface. It's one of those at speed vehicles, if you ask me. But here we go. So we're into a de-restricted zone right now. Hopefully the car in front of me will pick up, you know, some speed because it is de-restricted. I don't really want to sit here at 30. Oh, in fact, the person in front is going so slowly that the range has creeped up by a mile. So we started off with 91 miles and now it says I've got 92 at my disposal. So thank you for making me drive very economically. Okay, so now we're, we're very close to getting to the meat and potatoes of this particular review, which is what I like to do with electric vehicles, is take them down ladies' mile and see how they fare against their diesel equivalents. But again, it's a small van. It's not meant to do this. It's meant to do nice, slow, comfortable driving for short hop deliveries. Let's see how it fares. Okay, so. Here we go, so we're just poking our nose around the corner. 
totally, utterly empty. Let's put our foot down on the accelerator and see where we go. Okay, so nothing yet. So we're up at 60 miles an hour. Nothing yet, top in 65. We're up at 70 and suddenly it starts to kick up a notch and I can feel the motor. Now it's spinning up to speed. Here we go, whoa, very nice. And that is where those nice keen brakes come into play. Oh, it's almost like Renault know exactly what they're doing. Very nice, very good fun. Yeah, that'll do me, I'll buy that. Yeah, fair play. I wonder how the big van's gonna handle that. This is one of those electric vehicles that isn't suffering from some of the same problems that I've encountered with others. If I turn the fan off, road noise is really, really minimal. And maybe that's because I'm in the middle of the vehicle, the wheels are a bit further forward. I just don't know, but it's so quiet. It's just nice and ergonomic. There's nothing really to complain about, really. There's nothing to write home about, really, either. It's just a very functional cabin. A little bit of comfort, a few bells and whistles. It's nice to see a USB socket to charge up my phone. Nice to see an aux in as well, in case I want to use the phone as an audio device, because, of course, the connectivity in here is not as cutting edge as you might find in the Master, or at least I'm expecting to find in the Master. I know it's a light commercial vehicle, so this criticism comes with so many caveats that really you should just ignore. It's not the most exciting drive. It's perfectly fine, perfectly acceptable. It's exactly what you want from a short hop. And look at this, we've, we've been driving out apparently for, well, I've been driving this vehicle now for almost an hour, and uh, 85 miles I've still got range-wise. So it obviously means that I've been driving nice economical, but then again, that's the point, isn't it? This is a short hop vehicle. It's about doing those little runs out and about. It's not about winning land speed records. It's about thinking about this vehicle as a functional LCV, as a functional member of the commercial vehicle fleet on our roads at the moment. And it's perfect. So there we go. So if you're looking for something that's nice and quiet, apart from the fans, nice and comfortable to drive, where you won't have much a range anxiety and you want to be an early adopter, Renault Kangoo. Good place to start if you ask me really good place to start feels like you're driving a dodgem at the fairground but there's less less likelihood of you getting clonked in the back by some lunatic so here we go with the big old Renault Master ZE and uh, so far so good a lot bigger, so I'll be taking corners a lot wider and a lot slower. But yeah, this is uh, this is a beast of a vehicle, a lot, lot larger than the Kangoo ZE that we were just in. So, where in the Renault Kangoo ZE, we robbed ourselves back a couple of miles in range right from the start. This one is already dropping very quickly, so we're already down to 69 miles, and I haven't actually driven a mile in it yet, so maybe that's how I'm driving it or what, not quite sure, but. Again, I wouldn't put too much worry into that. There's still around 70 miles to go, which we're just gonna take it out for half an hour or so. So the visibility is excellent. In fact, I can see for miles. It's just so cool. And I know that the front is very snub nosed, so I, I can feel that I can see the end of this vehicle absolutely no problem. At lower speeds, there's a more prominent whine in the Renault Master than there is with the uh, Kangoo ZE, and I think that's purely because it's a bigger vehicle, so you need to make a bit more noise so that people can see you coming. Now we're stuck in a bit of slow traffic at the moment, but it's no hassle. In fact, the range has stabilised to 69, and it hasn't moved. We've been on the road for a fair few minutes now. Acceleration is no real issue as well when I've had to encounter any need for it. It just seems to pull away absolutely fine. This is less like sitting in a Dodgem though, and this is much more like sitting in the front of a transit-sized van. It feels big and it feels quite powerful. Again, because it's covered in cameras, I keep getting the odd look. And that might be because it's covered in cameras, but actually I prefer to think that Renault have done such a good job with the front end of this vehicle that people are turning their heads to have a look at it. Because it is an absolute score of chrome and black plastic at the front end, which is really nice. 
For me, it's quite exciting. Going from the Kangoo, where I'm sat in the middle and I was getting all hot and sweaty and stuff like that, to be sat in the top of this vehicle, that's what it feels like. You feel like you're sat at the very top of this vehicle, uh, which is very big and, and very comfortable to sit in. But you feel like you can just point it in whatever direction and you can put your foot down on the accelerator. I've got to say, there's a bit more pickup in the front of this van when you put your foot down on the accelerator than there was in the Kangoo ZE. And again, that might be because it's newer tech, this is the newer version of Master. But just for a bigger van, feels just a little bit more exciting. A little bit more size has made the whole deal just that little bit more exciting to drive. Again, safety is something that I feel this vehicle has in droves. I'm big and I'm largely in charge on the road. I don't feel like there's anything in this vehicle that can really handle. No one's, I don't think, going to be trying to cut me up anymore, anyway. What's quite nice is that right in front of me is someone with the top down because of course this day is as hot as the one that I'm driving the Kangoo in because of course it's the same day. Um, so I am finding myself sat here behind this guy with a soft top. I hope you've got some sun cream on your bald head my friend because I know what can happen if you don't have sun cream on your head when you have no hair. Here we go, we're going into Ladies Mile to give it the all important acceleration test. And of course, this is a big band, so I'm not expecting masses from it. But I've already experienced a few points where I've actually found this to be a very exciting vehicle to drive, especially when you accelerate away. Okay, so here we go. Front camera view. Here we go. It's having no real effect on range, actually, I've got to say. Driving at full pelt. 67 miles still in the tank. Oh no, it's just dropped to 66. The thing that always impresses me about the Renault Master is its ability to handle corners. For a vehicle this big, it doesn't really suffer from any rockage even when it's unloaded. There's no real spring um, wobbling around at the top of the suspension, which is really great. Because I always find that that adds to a little bit of uncertainty. There's always that little air of kind of uncertainty we think more. I don't really want to take this corner at speed or, you know, even maybe 30, 40 miles an hour. I don't know what happens to the suspension when it's all loaded up. It's something we will test. Put a, few, uh, put a few pallets of bricks or something in the back. But I would imagine it stiffens up really nicely. Yeah, this is a very pleasant vehicle to drive. Renault no cabins. That's half the battle, if you ask me. Get a good cabin, get a good loading bay. Everything happy. The only thing I miss from electric vehicles is just a little bit more uh, push and pull, as in, you know, that I like to feel like I've got a bit more speed than I might otherwise have. And I'm not saying the Renault Master is any slug in its Z format, but it certainly doesn't have as much poke as I would anticipate. But then again, it's a massive van. You're not going to be doing 50, 60, 70 miles an hour all the time. You're undoubtedly going to be doing a bit of urban driving, a bit of country driving. You want it to be nice and smooth so that nothing in the back goes flying around. Yeah, it's pretty damn good. So there you go, the Renault Kangoo ZE and the Renault Master ZE given their full Vanarama road test. And I've got to say, these are two excellent electric vans. You've got the Kangoo on one side for the short, hot, light loads, and you've got the Master on the other for those larger, more bulky loads. And they do their jobs excellently. Now this whole review was inspired by the fact that Renault have said they're turning their electric car, the Renault Zoe, into a small compact van. And if you think about it, compact van, small van and large van. All we need them to do is to let us have the Renault traffic in an all electric version and Renault will have one of the most comprehensive ranges of electric LCV available in the sector. And for that, I have to say fair play to Renault and check out the deals at vanarama.com.